What's up everyone, welcome back to another view. This time we're taking a look at Deadpool 2, the 12th installment into the X-Men, into the Fox and X-Men film franchise and sequel to the 2016 movie. Let's waste no time, let's get right into it. I love Deadpool 2. I like this movie on equal footing as the first movie. I have very few complaints on Deadpool 2 as a sequel. It does everything that I really wanted to do. It doesn't disappoint me at all. And what really sold me on Deadpool 2 was the first three minutes where it blatantly tells you that's going to be a blatant parody and just satire of Logan. And boy, oh boy, does Deadpool 2 do, does Deadpool 2 act like such a parody of Logan? It's absolutely hilarious. The plot is not a mirror image, but the elements are very, very familiar. This movie deals with this movie deals with you know uh, Deadpool wanting to kill himself to be with Vanessa in a very comical way. It deals with Deadpool forming a dysfunctional family, which is both which is both hilarious and heartwarming all at the same time. Go figure. And it's just a very fun movie. It ratches up the vi the violence from that first movie in a more cartoonish way. It adds a lot. It does. It adds a lot <laughs> to the overall X Men mythos. With further, with further references and Easter eggs and things like that. But it, that doesn't take away from the overall story, which has a lot of heart, which has a lot of really fun and cool moments, and has a lot of fun performances all throughout. So yeah, let's just go through this review as fast as humanly possible. Let's get the positives done. I mean, I don't really have a whole lot of negatives. If anything, those negatives are kind of like nitpicks. Let's get the positives out of the way first. The cast in this movie is a lot of fun. Once again, Ryan Reynolds returns as Deadpool, as Wade Wilson slash Deadpool, and just like in that first movie, he's absolutely outstanding in this movie. But in this movie, Ryan Reynolds gets to have a lot more dramatic moments in this movie. And there are times where he takes Wade Wilson to very, very dark places where he's kind of playing it straight in a lot of scenes and not making it and not making it overly comical. You know, a lot of the a lot of that deals a lot of those scenes is where he is at the beginning of the movie where he feels responsible for the death of Vanessa, who dies in this movie, and it's pretty much the catalyst that sets Wade on, on his character arc for this film, where he wants to where he wants to kill himself to be, to be with Vanessa, but he has to do certain things first, and he has to realize that he just can't, that he has unfinished business and things that he has to, to do, and then when the time is right, he can be with Vanessa. Like, that whole, that whole, that whole character arc, I think is actually really well done. And Ryan Reynolds has a chance to really give the character of Wade Wilson a lot of emotional depth. You know, he's not just the merc with the mouth who quacks, who, who uh, cuts these quips and breaks the fourth wall. He's also a man who's, who misses and yearns for his girlfriend. A lot of it can be very comical in a lot of ways. And I love the dark, and I love the dark humor where he tries to kill him off himself off in creative ways. I think that shit's hilarious. But I also like the scenes where he sees Vanessa in the afterlife. I think those scenes are very tender. And as usual, and I love the chemistry between Marina Baccarin and Ryan Reynolds in that first movie. And this one, I like it even better, especially since it's dealing with, you know, themes of like loss and tragedy. And I, like I said, I think Ryan Reynolds pulls off those scenes really, really well and has a lot of depth and dimension to Wade Wilson as an overall character that makes him very likable. It, it furthers his status as a more reluctant hero than actual hero. <clears throat> so no complaints with that whatsoever. Uh, Julian Dennison, who plays the kid Firefist, who Deadpool, who uh, Wade Wilson has to pretty much care for and protect. I thought Julian, this is Julian Dennison's debut role. I thought he did a really good job playing the character of Firefist. I think he's funny in a lot of scenes. I think he and Ryan Reynolds have a good on-screen rapport with one another. I like how they, I like how they, I like how at first Deadpool is apprehensive to want to care for this kid. But as the film progresses, he realizes that in order for him to be with Vanessa, he has to protect this child and has, and has to provide this child with a family. Because when Russell grows up, he creates a dystopian future where he kills Cable's wife and kid, and that is that, and that is what you know, and that is what, and that's the catalyst that has Cable go, uh, that has Cable time travel to want to kill Russell at a young age, preventing the death of his family. You know, and that's and that's and that's what gives Cable's his motivations. And I thought Julian Dennison did a really good job in the role. I liked him as Fire Fist. I like I like the I like some of the jokes he was able to quip. I like the on-screen chemistry he has with Ryan Reynolds. They have a lot of funny scenes together. I like the relationship that he has with Juggernaut, where he plays like his little sidekick. And I think in a lot of scenes, he uh, Julian Dennison can come across as kind of threatening and menacing, especially when he's about to kill the headmaster at the end of the movie. So yeah, I got to give a lot of credit to Julian Dennison for for a guy who hasn't had too many, for a kid who hasn't had too much on-screen experience. He did a really good job with the role. And he needed to work as an on-screen chemistry 
as an on as an on screen ca uh, character, or else his entire story arc would have just fell apart. So good on Julian Dennison for holding his own in this movie. No complaints with that whatsoever. Uh, Brianna Hildebrand returns as Negasonic Teenage Warhead. She has this little thing where she's in a same sex relationship with Yukio, and I like the running joke of Yukio of Yukio and Wade constantly saying hi Wade, bye Wade. You know, I think that stuff is cute. Uh, I mean, Nagasaki Teenage Warhead doesn't do a lot in this movie. Her scenes are sprinkled all throughout. She really doesn't do anything to, like, the third, to, like, the final fight. The same with Yukio. But, you know, it's fine for what it is. The running gag never gets boring to me, at least, so I enjoyed it. Uh, Colossus once again returns in this movie, and this movie expands upon the, the friendship between Deadpool and Colossus even more in this movie, and it's done to awesome effect. And I love it. I think it's great. Like I think Colossus and Deadpool is one of my favorite parts of the first step of the first movie, and in this one, it's no exception. I I love it a lot, especially when Deadpool becomes an X Men trainee, and and, and uh, Colossus is trying to is trying to recite the rules of being an X Men, which is no killing and label everything in the and <laughs> label everything. I thought that stuff was funny. And when Deadpool makes a kill while as a trainee, that's this is what breaks Colossus into saying, Deadpool, you're not X Men material, and I'm done risking risking my neck for you. Like, I like that sort of stuff. You can tell that Colossus genuinely wants to make Wade Wilson a better person. And you can tell that Colossus sees the good within Wade Wilson. And that pays off beautifully in the third act when Colossus and Deadpool reunite. And Colossus is able to play by Deadpool's rules and actually curses near the end of the movie. And it, and it doesn't feel for, forced. It feels earned. Especially when you go back to the first movie where Colossus is portrayed as a goody two-shoes, you know, almost, wet, you know, a say your prayers, eat your vitamins type of superhero. And in this movie, it's a further extension of that. So when he breaks the rules, it never feels out of place and it feels, it feels genuine. Especially when he has that really entertaining fight scene with Juggernaut at the end. So I like all that stuff with Colossus. The Deadpool movies do Colossal more justice than the mainline X-Men movies. And that's a shame. Because the Deadpool movies alone tells you just how much potential was wasted with Colossus in the mainline X-Men movies. He's a very underused character in those in the mainline movies. It's a shame. Because you got a lot you got a lot of badass moments with Colossus and a lot of funny moments with Colossus. And like I said, his character his straight laced character bounces off the bombastic character of Deadpool easily. Speaking of which, another character that bounces off Deadpool really good in this movie is Cable, played by Josh Brolin. I love Cable in this movie. I'm a big Josh Brolin fan. I'm a big Josh Brolin fan as an actor. I think he's really, really talented and really, and he's just really over around, really good actor. Uh, I loved him as Thanos in Infinity War. This movie came out a couple months after Thanos, after Brolin turned in a great performance as Thanos and as Cable. It's a fun performance. I love the character of Cable in this movie. I think Josh Brolin's performance is great. He does a fantastic job of playing this character as from the future who is just stoic, hardened, bitter, angry. And just not evil, but you can tell he's a man on a mission with he's a man with a singular goal and he's willing to do something horrific for a greater good and personal gain. And you would think that a character this stoic and this, you know, and th that this stoic would not be able to work with Deadpool, but it works <laughs> perfectly. You know, Wade Wilson, Wade Wilson's antics do nothing but just irritate and aggravate Cable. And Brolin and Ryan and Reynolds have really fun on screen chemistry with one another. I love it. Especially the running gag where, where Deadpool keeps insinuating that Cable's a racist and it pisses Cable off to the point where you think he's about to punch him in the face. I love it. And I love the little mini X-Force team that forms between Domino, Cable, and Deadpool at the end of the movie along with Fire Fist, Dolphin, and Dolphin to Colossus, Yukio, and Teenage Warhead. You know, I love that stuff. Speaking of X-Force, I actually really liked the running gag of X-Force. I mean, I think you could have done a little bit more. I think it would have been much more funnier if the, if the team members died while trying to take down Juggernaut and they all died and, and they all died in more creative ways. But the scene where Deadpool and Weasel are assembling X-Force, I think is actually very entertaining. Uh, and yeah, them getting offed while parachuting is absolutely funny too. I ain't gonna lie. Like I said, I think it would've been, I think it would've been funny if they died in battle. I think that would've added a lot more, but you know, it is what it is and we got what we got. And I ain't gonna fully complain about it because I was entertained. You know, I like seeing actors like Terry Crews, um, Bill Skarsgård. This movie does a creative Brad Pitt cameo, which I thought was hilarious. It's also a nice little wink, wink, hint, hint that Brad Pitt was in consideration to play Cable in this movie, but wasn't able to do so. But they were able to sma snag him for a cameo, which I thought was which I thought was hilarious. So yeah, and of course you got the whole thing with Peter, who is not a mutant, who's just a regular guy. 
him paid by Rob Delaney. And I love the whole running joke of Deadpool cooling him Sugar Bear. Like, run home, Sugar Bear. <laughs> I thought that stuff was hilarious. Um, Zazie Beats, who played Domino. I like her. I like Zazie Beats as Domino. I like how she's like the straight girl to Deadpool's antics. And I like how her whole mutant power is based off luck. And Deadpool's like not convinced by it whatsoever. I thought that running gag was actually really entertaining, very interesting. And not, well, not interesting, but very entertaining nonetheless. So yeah, I got I got nothing complaints. I got no complaints about that. Um, I like some of the cameos I earned in this movie. I like how the movie was, once again, did the whole running gag of Deadpool in the expansion. There's no X-Men around. Yet in the foreground, you see the first class team in a, in a separate room. And if Wade Wilson would have turned his head just very slightly, he would have saw all the X-Men in one place. Like that, I thought that running gag was, was funny as hell. Uh, I like the whole gag, I like the whole scene in the icebox where Deadpool's mutant powers are being, are halted by this collar and his cancer comes back. And this is really, and this is the deterioration and we see how, and this is really the cracks that form between Wade Wilson and, uh, Russell's, uh, relationship. It is, was established earlier when, as a trainee, you know, Deadpool went to the Essex Children's School, uh, Children's Hospital, which is run by this mysterious headmaster. Uh, once again, the Deadpool movie hints and, hints and references uh, Mr. Sinister, uh, another uh, Mr. Sinister with the, with the whole Essex orphanage, and it's revealed that Fire Fist is abused by the headmaster there because of, because he's a mutant, because the headmaster sees mutants as abominations of God and and sees them as religious as religious satanic creatures, and this is what and Russell's abuse at the hands of the headmaster in the Essex in the Essex orphanage, or what shape him into becoming the vicious killer he does, he comes in the future, and why Cable has to stop him at a young age. I like all that stuff. I thought that stuff was handled really, really well. It did a good job at, at it did a good job at balancing the comedy aspect of it and the seriousness of it without being too over the top and too uh, and too in your face is what I'm trying to get at. I like that stuff. I thought that was handled really, really well. <clears throat> uh, man, this is a lot, well, a lot more positives to cover with this movie. There's so many good things. Uh, back to the icebox scene with uh, you know Deadpool's got the collar on. His powers, his mutant powers have been taken away, and his cancer comes back tenfold. And this is what starts the deterioration between him and Russell, where he tells Russell, listen, kid, get away from me. Don't be around me. I'm going to be dead anyway. Find someone else. Leave me alone. He just wants to die and be with Vanessa. This is what eventually leads Russell to finding Juggernaut. And I love how Juggernaut's portrayed in this movie. Juggernaut's portrayed as an absolute badass beast in this movie and not the comedy clown that he was in The Last Stand. I mean, the uh, Juggernaut's demise in this movie is kind of comical with his pants being pulled down and getting shocked up his, up his anus. I mean that was comical but up to that he was kicking everyone's ass kicking deadpool's ass kicking cable's ass kicking domino's ass kicking kicking kick, kicking colossus's ass i mean juggernaut was kicking everyone's ass <laughs> and i thought he was like one. he was like one of the better aspects of this movie was juggernaut like the overall headmaster the overall headmaster who was like the main villain he was kind of like you know bleh. but juggernaut and fire fist were they were better they were better villains so where you have one weak villain, you got two, you have, you have a strong villain in Juggernaut, and you have Fire Fist, who is a kid who has lost his way, who needs to be found before he crosses a path that there's no coming back from, which is, again, a very well-handled character, or can play his own hole into the family aspect when you get to the third act, where Wade sacrifices his life to save Russell, and this is what convinces Russell that not everyone is like the headmaster, but, and that there is a family there for him, and I love that stuff, I thought it was really well-handled. And again, I, and that and that that death scene, <laughs> it's played for laughs, and it, and a lot of it's really funny. Though I think it goes on maybe a little too long, with the many, with the many fake outs. But yeah, uh, <laughs> it's clear as day that this that this death scene is homaging and parodying Logan hardcore, and it's absolutely hysterical in a lot of places. So I enjoyed it a lot. <clears throat> um, yeah. So from characters and story aspects, I that's good stuff. I mean, yeah. Like I said, the headmaster is not the most intimidating villain you'll ever see in your life. He kind of sucks. He's mostly he's mostly a religious zealot taking one of the taking an aspect of Striker of of uh, really of Striker's comic book counterpart of char of Striker's comic characteristics characteristics, and you're applying it to this new character because in the comic Striker is a religious zealot with a military background. So you're taking the religious zealot of Striker's personality and you're giving it to this new headmaster character. And like I said. He's just there as a conduit for the Essex house and the further referencing of, S of uh, Mr. Sinister and building up to that character that never came to be, which is what irritates me more. I think, I think Mr. Sinister should have debuted in this movie as the overarching villain. I think that would be much more interesting than the headmaster. 
and maybe in Mr. Sinister manipulating Russell and having Juggernaut be a part of, of Sinister's plans would have also been very interesting and entertaining. We'd like to see how they would pull that off. Uh, so yeah, from a story and casting standpoint, those are my thoughts. The overall production value of this movie, oh, this movie is beautiful. It's done by David Lidiich, who cut his teeth on the John Wick trilogy. And yeah, Deadpool 2 and John Wick, these movies are very similar in terms of its style, in terms of the stylized violence and the overall cinematography and look. It looks fantastic. Uh, I love a lot of the, a lot of the action sequences in this movie look are vicious, they're, but they're also a lot of fun. Especially some of the brawling between Deadpool and Cable is played for a lot of laughs, especially when they do a parody of the old X-Men origin scenes where Deadpool has the swords and it doesn't work at all. I thought that shit was hilarious. And I think, and like I said, a lot of the fight scenes with Juggernaut is also some is funny shit as well, too. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to think what else, what else, what else. Is, uh, I'm trying to think what else is there. To, I think I covered pretty much everything there is to cover. Like, I know the death of Vanessa gained a lot of criticism as being the whole woman in fridge trope, but it works as the heart of this story. And it gives Wade Wilson, and, and it works for Wade, Mil Wade Wilson's character arc with him wanting to be with Vanessa in the afterlife. I mean, at the end of the day, it's retcon at the end when Wade Wilson fixes uh, Cable's time traveling device and goes back through time to clean up the timeline. He eventually saves Vanessa, and he also we get some also funny things where he like shoots Ryan Reynolds while reading the, <laughs> while reading the Green Lantern script. He shoots Barakapool from X Men Origins, and he goes back in time to almost kill to, to contemplate killing Baby Hitler. I, mean, I thought those gags were absolutely hysterical and hilarious. I mean, I love that stuff, and like I said, I love the um, the formation of this of the dysfunctional family that was that came at the end with Cable. With you know Cable admiring what Deadpool did by saving Russell's life and and his timeline being cleaned up and Cable, you know pretty much stating he's going to stick around his timeline for a while, further expanding upon the real X Force, which is Domino, Deadpool, and Cable. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think I covered basically all that there is to cover with this movie. And maybe I missed a couple of things here and there, but those were just my overall bare bones thoughts on Deadpool too. I like it on equal level with the first movie. I think Deadpool 2 is a lot of fun and a worthy successor to Deadpool 1, which is why I'm going to give it a solid 9 out of 10. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments sections down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.